I do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer stuff, and around two or three years ago, I started working my my friend Max on this project called the Dead Project. And basically, it's a project for helping scientists share data. And uh, what does that mean? We don't really know. We spent the two years, last two years, trying to figure that out through a series of iterations. But we kind of uh, came up with this idea of uh, sharing data is basically just the same as sharing files, because files are data, and data is files. So we ended up building a, a file sharing app that's really awesome, especially for um, for sharing scientific data. And um, you can kind of think of it as a iteration of BitTorrent. If you have people heard about BitTorrent, somebody has heard about it. <laughs> um, but a really cool thing about our project is that I think it says down here on the website that um, <coughs> we uh, try to do everything in the open. Um, we're a completely grant-funded project. We're really, really lucky to be grant-funded, which basically means that. Uh, nice old rich people give us money to work on this, <laughs> which is uh, borderline ethical, I guess. But uh, you know, you gotta compromise somewhere. But anyways, we get we get we get we apply for grants and we get grant money to work on um, solving this problem of sharing scientific data. And we spent that money hiring awesome people, open source developers, uh, build tools, and we built this tool called um, that, which is like a very simple app that you can download by going to this website. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a BitTorrent app where you can uh, drag and drop a folder. And uh, by drag and dropping a folder, you get a link out, and you can send that link to somebody else. And if they have that, they can start tailing your folder. Um, if you're familiar with Dropbox, it's kind of like that, but it's peer-to-peer. -peer. And it's uh, uh, built for like big data. I had to say that at some point. Um, so. It has really good tools for like just getting the data you want instead of getting all the data. So like a classic problem in science is that a lot of data sets are really, really big like um, because uh, they have a lot of data. So some data sets will be like terabytes of data. But you're always only interested in like, you know, that one thumbnail that looks really cool in your paper. Um, so we spend a lot of time making tools for, for like, you know, just getting the data you need, whatever that means. Um, but you should check it out. Um, Anyways, um, is anybody in here working in science? No? Science? Like what's in at like universities and stuff? I'm just curious. Cool. Uh, so we target mostly um, scientific use cases. Uh, and that just means that, you know, use cases where somebody writes a paper and by writing that paper, they do some analysis of basically some data, right? So it could be that you're doing a big survey asking people a bunch of questions, you get a lot of data in. Or like you're doing bioinformatics where you're doing gene sequencing, stuff like that. And you end up having all this data and you write a paper and you publish that paper, but you have all this data that actually went into like, you know, writing this paper and you kind of want to publish that also. So there's some really sad study studies um, that's been done recently about if you look at a paper, how much of that data can still be retrieved. And uh, you would think that, oh, you know, it's probably like 90% and like like 95% of the data is still available out there. But actually it turns out in like two out of three cases, the data is gone. So like you'll have all these cool papers where somebody said like, we think we cured cancer, but we can't reproduce it because you know we forgot to upload the data somewhere. So that's basically what we're trying to, um, to solve by uh, building this decentralized apps for sharing data. So what if if you wrote a paper, uh, you could put all your data into this app, and you get a link out, and then other people could help you host the data by just running it, or you could have a university running at that, uh, the data app and with like a big server farm that had a lot of storage capacity, but without having to organize it with other people. Um, so it's a very simple app um, like that. So that's basically, you should try it out and you should give us feedback. Uh, it's pretty fun right now. You can also use it to share like cat pictures and stuff. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, what cool data sets do we have now on it, Joshua? Do you remember? Uh, we have all the torture cats from Ants. <laughs> okay. Proof of like happy data sets. We actually recently did a really fun, uh, really fun one where me and Joshua were in the States, and uh, there's been a lot of, I don't know if you know, but there's a new president in America. 
Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about uh, them solving global warming by just deleting all the data about global warming. <laughs> um, so we recently did a fun project where we were like, let's see, see if we can actually back that data up. So we wrote a script that basically just crawled their entire data sets and backed it up to a data set that we built in my friend Max's house uh, on top of like our technologies. And we had a, a node app running for like a couple of days just downloading all their data. And it actually turns out that the day after we downloaded all the data, they started deleting it. <laughs> um, so we have all the data now and it's in a dead somewhere. Uh, so kind of like validating our own use case of, you know, decentralization is good because if you have centralized data at some point, somebody will probably forget to back it up if it's not in their you know, interest to keep stuff like that. So yeah. Anyway, that's my brief introduction. You should go to this website, thatproject.org, and download it and uh, try it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think Aral is also going to talk about this, but we care a lot about UX. Uh, it's probably the thing I'm the worst at. We have some really good UX people on our team. So we try to make peer-to-peer -peer apps where you don't really know it's peer-to-peer, -peer, but it's just like try to focus on you know doing the job, so like sharing data uh, in easy ways. Stuff like that. Cool, yeah. That's my thing. Go for it. Um, what are, what would you say is like the main challenge you guys still have right now that you maybe need help on? Um, and also, uh, what would you say was like one of the main challenges that you overcame that was like one of the most difficult things in this? So the main thing we need help with is actually, it's the main thing most projects need help with is just people using it and tell, tell, telling us why it's wrong or like what's missing. Uh, and you know, I know it's probably something you hear a lot, but it's actually really, really useful. And we're in the phase now where we're, we've been through like three years of development, a lot of iterations, and we have something we really f feel like it's hitting a, you know, a nerve. Uh, but now's the time if we have to change something and stuff like that. In terms of like, you know, challenges, it's surprisingly hard to figure out if you're working on the right thing. And uh, the main thing we found out is that when you have a fluffy goal, which most decentralized systems have, you always try to solve some fluffy problem in terms of like, we want to help uh, you know scientists share data or help data be available. You have to go through so many iterations of that idea and simplify it so many times, and you don't know it, but it takes like two or three years. And you have to realize, this is actually one of the reasons why we're like really interested in uh, nonprofit funding also. So it took us three years to get to a project that we felt actually was solving the problem by going through some really hard iterations. And if we had, for example, started out by raising some venture money to build this, within a year, we would have to focus on go to market and like um, turning our product into something that could uh, start paying back those investors somehow or exit strategies and stuff like that. But by raising money for grants, which is really hard, because you have basically, you know, it's less money and it's much more work. I'm very lucky to work with people that are really good at that. I'm really bad at it, personally. We get to make all the hard decisions of saying, actually, we build a thing and we talk to scientists and it turns out they want this other thing instead, so we're gonna iterate it. And we're just gonna throw everything away and it's fine, even though we spend half a million dollars getting there, because this is why we get grants. Uh, so that model for me is, was very interesting to feel like, and it's like a true experience. And um, I'm really happy to be on one of the few teams that can actually do that. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if it's possible to summarize without going uh, into too long a discussion, how is this different from BitTorrent and why? Yeah, sure. So actually, uh, if you look up any of my other talks that I've done, it's, more, it's been, a, I've talked a lot about BitTorrent because I've done a lot of stuff on BitTorrent. And um, I don't want to talk too much tech because I can talk about tech for a long time and then we'll be happy. But I feel like uh, I'll derail the meetup. <laughs> um, but I really like BitTorrent and I like BitTorrent for a couple of reasons. It's very simple from a technical standpoint. It gets the job done and it has a huge user base. So it's like one of the few BitTorrent networks that actually had mass appeal I had mass appeal because of various reasons. One of uh, it's really easy to use, and uh, piracy. Uh, so we wanted to build something that was as easy to use as piracy. Sorry, as BitTorrent. <laughs> Man, this is this is how I end up going to jail sometime. 
Uh, I also sometimes I mix up the words uh, piracy and privacy. <laughs> and you know, anyways, um, but like something as BitTorrent, but not BitTorrent because we, we don't want to share movies on this. We want to actually make something that has real impact outside of just you know uh, copying uh, copyrighted material. Uh, for science, it's a really important use case to be able to uh, get updates to data sets from a technical standpoint. So if you publish a data set, there's probably a change to that data set in a week. You want to be able to get that. And technically, for various reasons, BitTorrent is really bad at this. Uh, if you work a lot with BitTorrent, uh, you also discover that BitTorrent is actually not really good for big data. Uh, so as soon as your data set gets above a couple of gigabytes, BitTorrent is actually not very good because it has a scaling model where it chops the, the data into chunks. It's like a, a fixed amount of chunks. So do, those chunks grow very quickly, technical stuff. Uh, so we solve that also. So I, I, I like to say that our tech is like a 1.1 version basically of BitTorrent. Taking all the good ideas of BitTorrent, adding in a bunch of ma uh, modern stuff. So we try not to reinvent the world. Uh, and then uh, strip away the piracy to try to solve actual really important uh, problems in the world. Yeah, you were jokingly saying something about this is the reason why I'm going to jail, and I know you were joking, but have you met, I mean, if we see Trump deleting the data set for something, something like the environment data, um, do, do, have you met any resistance from governmental institutions or stuff like that? Any pressure in some way? So uh, I'm very lucky to be born in Scandinavia, and I've had a lot of interaction with governments in Scandinavia, but in a very positive standpoint from this, because they're very actually very actively uh, interested in stuff like this, and uh, from the sense that I have to tell them that we're not ready. Um, uh, in the U.S., the U.S. is is like very interesting because, from my experience, and I'm not a U.S. citizen, I'm not an expert, but from my like you know very broad view, most people that work in government in the U.S. is very interested in solving it. It's just that there's a disconnect between the people working and the policymakers, sometimes depending on who's in charge and not. So personally, we haven't had any direct problems with it, and I don't think we will because um, there's not. We're not breaking any laws, and we don't want to break any laws. Um, and it's also not like, I, you know, I say, I say the government might be deleting data. They're not. They're just choosing not to back something up. So, like, you know, they're also not breaking any laws. It's all like a very fluffy gray area. Um, and everything we work with is public. And it's all public and it's all open source and it's going to continue to be open source forever. It's very important to us. It's also why we pursue a grant funded model, grant funded model, and like think a lot about ethics and moral and stuff. Uh, one thing though we do uh, worry about a lot is like what I like to call a basic um, privacy, not piracy. Um, so, and this is this is like a technical uh, problem, but also a very non-technical one. Peer-to-peer -peer apps have a tendency of leaking a lot of metadata. So it might be that we're building something that is perfectly legal, but let's say you know somebody chooses to share a database of abortion data, right? It's something that's very like hot topic in some countries, and it's even banned in a lot of countries, right? It's very important for us that even though this is a peer-to-peer -peer app, somebody could download that data without leaking to the rest of the world that they're downloading it because that might have massive repercussions for them, not us, which is very important to us. So we think a lot about how to, we can build peer-to-peer -peer systems that still have like, you know, the scaling benefits of spreading things out without uh, leaking stuff like who's downloading what and without turning into something like Tor, which is fine, but you know, also has a lot of UX uh, implications in terms of like, you know, when you lock everything massively down. That's a very hard, you know, that's probably the thing, honestly, we spent the most time discussing because it's like every time you decentralize something, you're usually also leaking something in this sense. So what we do, like a trade-off we try to do is like, instead of acti actively sharing in a DHT who's sharing everything, we try to centralize that in a, a more close network so we can more control who's uh, we're leaking that data to. So we don't end up in a situation where somebody can just uh, ask a network who's sharing all the abortion data and then go knock on the doors, 
which you could do with like BitTorrent, for example. That's like, you know, I don't know, you probably read it in the news, with, but sometimes when uh, lawyers will like, you know, look who's sharing some movie and just send letters out. It's like a very common strategy. That's like, a, that's the downside of decentralized systems if you don't think about these things. It's very hard. <laughs>